back in the day with heart, did, did, did you, you and Nancy come in with acoustic guitar and say, Hey guys, we got this uh, song it goes like this. And then everybody arrange it or did yeah. other people bring songs? Yeah. Yeah. Um, in fact, you'd be amazed at how different some of the original demos that we came in with were from the actuals. I mean, mm. the song Magic Man was unrecognizable. <laughs> and I give a lot of the credit to Mike Flicker, our first producer, because he yeah. he just he taught us everything we knew the first couple years. And um he was great yeah. at that. And also he was great at things like getting you used to sitting in a room full of people and just going ahead and singing out into the room. You're little newborn baby ideas which is really can be intimidating you know yeah no yeah especially back then when you're young yeah you got got used to that you know and just got used to yeah giving it you know but uh it was it was even though it was heart was you and your sister it still was kind of a band vibe right yes. everybody would bring in ideas yeah 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 that's great. yeah um yeah. what happened was we were bringing in a lot of ideas and other people were too, but the ones that we brought in just were the ones that naturally floated to the top. And Oh, I see. Right. Yeah. So. So what was hard, uh, like it was you and your sister and then you got with other people and it was considered the Wilson sisters band or was it a band and you guys were the musicians in the band? It was a very, was it, um, each different era of heart, it was a different way. It was mm. like I'd say in the eighties, it was more of like the two sisters and some backup guys. Um, in the well, that yeah, that's what I saw because that was with Denny Carmas yeah. on the drums, Denny Car Howard Lee, Howard Lee, and then who Mark, who's playing bass? Mark Andes. Mark Andes, right. And they, they all came from different bands. I mean, Mar Mark Andes was with Spirit, and D Denny Carmarcy was with Montrose, and Denny. Yeah, yeah. what a great drummer, Denny. Oh, oh <laughs> one of my favorites. Oh my god, yeah, it was like John Bonham. He was so good. What a feel. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> nice guy too. He was so nice to me when we opened up for you guys. Nine months we opened up for yeah. you. Yeah. And it was a particularly painful nine months, nine months because John Cougar had a number one record. And I know we were b going into the era where we couldn't get arrested. Right. And we were that, headlining yeah, that, the show. So it, it was uncomfortable. You guys treated us really well, though. I remember what. Yeah, I remember what was happening was. So we we were on tour, but we had maybe hurt so good. But Jack and Diane was released while we were on tour. And you're right, as every night there were more and more John Cougar fans because Jack and Diane, and he was all over MTV. We were the new thing. And you guys had been around for six years, you know, and all of a sudden that record, what was that called? Private something that, that Private album? audition and, uh. Yeah. Yeah. I think passion works. Yeah. You guys, but you guys. And you guys were really nice to us, you know. Uh, you had George Packer. Yeah. The guy that was the tour, the tour man, nicest guy in the world. Yeah. Great guy. You guys treated us really well. Well, I didn't mean to bring up a bad time, but that was uh, that was great for yeah, us. Yeah, it, 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 it was just a, just a time among many, you know. Like, yeah, like, yeah. like I said a while ago, if you stay around long enough, you see they're just eras, and you just kind of roll oh, yeah. through them, you know. And, uh, well. I call it adapt or die. You have to you have to adapt and adjust to stay relevant yeah. because things things are changing that we have no control That's over. That's right. I mean, who would have thought? I used to be in a big studio seven days a week, nonstop. Now I'm in a big studio seven times a year because and I, this is my studio here because of that. I went, oh my god, they're not selling records anymore. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's like all of a sudden I felt like I was in the horse and buggy business in the car show. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> you know, it's like, whoa, you know, so we have to adapt and adjust. And yeah, I think, prob I think it's our love and our just 
love for doing what we do that keeps us going. You just keep marching forward. So true. 